Hi, and welcome to this live reading from The Devil's Day by Megan Mackey, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Prologue. You can't do this, Alf roared. He had never raised his voice to Maddie before in his life. The shock of it reverberated through the bar, so much so that even the kitschy devils on the wall of the bar seemed uncomfortable. Maddie didn't flinch, however. Instead, she stared him down stone-faced. The loan officer sitting across from her in the booth looked back and forth between the two, shifting just as uncomfortably in his seat as the demons did on their perches, not that he seemed to notice them moving. Getting no further response from his mistress, Alf turned to glare at the lanky man standing behind her. He leaned against the wall with his arms crossed, meeting the bar manager's eyes, but also giving him nothing to work with. And you approve of this? Alf challenged the man with his perfect Hollywood movie star proportions. It's her bar. I have nothing to do with this decision, the handsome man answered, using a thumb to push back his Omberg hat from his forehead, revealing her curly hair. You're supposed to be her husband, Alf snarled. That's enough, Maddie snapped, which sounded wrong from her. She never snapped. The sweet grandmotherly face, framed by white waves of hair, was always smiles and warmth and understanding. The retainer flinched, unable to recall a time she had even been mildly annoyed. We can do this another time if you would like to discuss, the loan officer attempted as he moved to stand, but Maddie raised a hand for him to stay put. I've made my decision. There is nothing more to discuss. Please have a seat, she invited. The loan officer found he had no choice but to comply. You can't do this, Alf repeated. This is our house. It's just a place, Maddie replied as she focused on the paperwork in front of her, wielding her pen as she searched for the line she was supposed to sign. It's more than just a place, Alf slammed his small, beefy hand on the table, covering the mortgage papers, which was quite a feat when his head just cleared the height of the table. Why are you doing this? Maddie sat back again and took a breath. Seeing a small opening, Alf pressed on. If you need the money, I can get the money. Somehow, I'll do whatever it takes. There isn't time, Maddie said levelly. We don't know where she is or what they've done to her. Her who? Alf demanded desperately. Maddie pressed her lips together. She's a girl, barely a woman, and that's all you need to know. For a girl? This is all? For a girl? You would exchange a wizard's house? For a girl? Alf shook his head. He knew everything there was to know about Maddie. He knew how old she truly was, despite her grandmotherly appearance. He had also seen her with a young face and achingly beautiful, but always wise. Why was she doing this? Who is this girl? I don't understand. This is really none of your business, little man, the lanky man said, moving forward to intercede, grabbing the bar manager's shoulder. Heat burned through Alf's thick shirt from where the lanky man touched him, but he didn't dare give Maddie's husband the satisfaction of flinching. Lucas, Maddie said more gently, laying her own hand on her husband's unnaturally hot arm. A tense second later, Lucas released Alf's shoulder. The fabric there had turned black in the perfect shape of his fingers and palm. He moved back to his position behind Maddie, leaning against the wall after readjusting his wings. The loan officer did a double take, but they disappeared again before he would have gotten a sure look at them the cosmic microfiber of the feathers blending them away into the fabric of the universe. Alf, Maddie said, stretching out her hand to grip his still-clenched one. Her gaze met his with a more familiar, calm understanding. I do not need your acceptance or your approval, and I will do this without either of them. You serve this house. I serve you, Alf declared, cutting her off. Then do as you're told and step back. You aren't the only person who serves me, and you are not the only person I care about. I am sworn to protect you, even if it is from yourself, which is what you should be doing. He shot an accusatory finger at Lucas, who didn't move a muscle. He only glowered back. 
Alf, no matter how much you wish it, I will never choose you, Maddie said with deadly quiet, her tired, wrinkled face withering a little with the weighty sorrow of being forced to say what all three knew to be true. Alf thought he was going to crumble right there, his heart openly bleeding before the only woman he had ever loved. No other held a piece of his heart, not even his ex-wife. But what conviction did he have as her retainer if he folded now? She didn't mean that. She was only saying it because he wouldn't stop, couldn't stop. There was too much at stake. Picking up her pen again, Maddie shook her head. It's just a place like any other. How can you say that? It holds, he eyed the loan officer. Magic. The loan officer cleared his throat. I assure you, we have taken the whole value of the asset into consideration before making our very generous offer. You can't risk everything like this. Alf, you were dismissed from my service. A cold shock washed down Alf's body as the magic that linked him to Maddie dissolved with such simplistic words. If she had struck him with her fist, it would have hurt less. No, he choked out, unable to believe what was happening. Behind her, Lucas smirked. Y you, you can't. I sign here, Maddie asked the loan officer, who still held on by the tiniest thread of professionalism. Uh, yes, here and here. Are you sure you don't want a cosigner? That earned him a pair of black, unamused looks from the two most powerful beings he had probably ever encountered. Sorry, it is company policy to um, ask with big transactions like this. This is all on my head, Maddie said, with such understanding that the loan officer blushed with shame. He flipped the next page and pointed to another set of lines. Here and here. No mere girl is worth this. She signed, and Alf hit his knees beside her. She ignored him and continued signing away their past and their future. For what? Money? For some unnamed girl who had gotten herself in trouble? Maddie had always done everything possible to save others when she could, but this? This was going too far. You're exchanging a priceless wonder for quick cash? barely realized that tears streamed down his face. Are we done? Maddie asked the loan officer, ignoring Alf on the floor. Uh, not quite, the loan officer said, diving into his briefcase to pull out his Omnison reader and connecting it to his chunky laptop. Um, place your card in here and I will enact the transfer of the funds directly to your Omnison. You'll be able to access them within the hour. Good, do it. Maddie said, slipping a thick gray plastic card from a pouch sitting next to her. She pushed it into the reader and a small light on the side lit up green. The loan officer hit some more buttons on his keyboard and there was a merry little ding as the light turned blue. You may remove your Omnison now, the loan officer informed her, then stretched out a hand to shake. It was a pleasure doing business with you, he said with rote cheerfulness. Maddie obliged him before removing her card from the reader to slip back into her bag. Thank you very much. Now, I don't mean to be rude, but I do need to open in a half an hour, and I have to reinstate a good many magical charms before then. I'm sorry? The loan officer shifted in his seat, confused. We're a magical establishment, Lucas said, pushing off the wall, heading behind the bar as he spoke. She had to turn off a lot of very important charms in this place to keep from blowing up your little tech box there. So, if you don't want to lose it, I suggest shutting it down quickly. The loan officer jumped at that, then started initiating shutdown procedures with a few taps. Yes, yes, indeed, I see, he muttered. Standing up, Maddie looked down again on her former retainer, still kneeling beside her. For a moment, he thought she was going to say something to him, but then her feet began to move away. I, Alfonso Fitzmagdalene, steward of the House of the Magdalene, do acknowledge the Magdalene as my lady and mistress, he said too quickly. Instantly, he could feel the magic reverberate between them, binding his mind, body, and soul to Maddie. Her steps faltered as it hit her. She leaned against the booth, her hand on her chest, breathing heavily from the shock of the magic she had been unprepared to receive. Are, are you all right? 
the loan officer asked, stopped, mi stopped midway from exiting with his briefcase in hand and computer bag sloppily hung across his shoulders. She's fine, you should leave now, Lucas ordered, startling him into action. While Lucas chased him out, Maddie finally met Alf's heated gaze. I said you were dismissed, she repeated, and the magic began to dissipate. Before it was completely gone, Alf said again in a rush, I, Alfonso Fitzmagdalene, the steward of the House of the Magdalene, do acknowledge the Magdalene as my lady and mistress. Alf? I, Alfonso Fitzmagdalene, steward of the House of the Magdalene, I do not need a retainer who do acknowledge the Magdalene as my lady and mistress, and yes, you do. Jan Janowski is finally officially leaving soon. I will be the last retainer, and without me, you renounce your claim to this house. She still has me, Lucas interjected, having cleared the bar of any other intrusion. Alf could feel the darker thrum of magic coming from the doorway. Lucas had locked it down so no one else could enter, probably until Maddie and Alf had resolved their confrontation. You, Alf scoffed, you're no retainer, you're just another... I said that's enough. Silence. Maddie ordered. Alf felt his bond with Maddie compel him to silence. It was very rare she ever re used the retainer bond to do such a thing, but in that moment, he was beyond grateful for the proof that the link was still there. Maddie passed a weary hand over her face. If I dismiss you again, you'll just repeat the vow. Alf didn't nod or acknowledge her question. He didn't have to. His determination was written all over his face. Maddie sighed and then stepped forward to crouch down equal with Alf. He didn't dare breathe. I dismiss you from my service, she repeated with measured tones. The magic dissipated, and Alf could feel his will to speak return. But he didn't. In a contest of wills, he knew he was no match for Maddie. In that moment, he realized how foolish he had truly been to try. But before his spirit could shatter in defeat, she, she saved him again, like she had so many times before. Now swear to serve this house and not just to me. Alf's eyes went wide. I serve you, he insisted, only for her to press her fingers to his lips. Swear to me to serve the house. Swear to me that you will defend it no matter what should happen to me. He wanted to insist he would never let anything happen to her, his life, his light, yet her eyes compelled him, her beautiful will. Some part of him intuitively understood what she was asking of him, even if his mind couldn't form the thought. I, Alfonso Fitzmagdalene, steward of the House of the Magdalene, do swear to protect, he licked his lips, this house until the day of my death. I will protect it for my lady. Maddie smiled and nodded. He didn't dare get off the floor even as she stood up. Thank you, Alf. Come on, her husband said, sliding up beside her. We need to finish getting ready for Devil's Day. And then, like a dream, she was gone.